how many of you stand in your closet? You have a gazillion clothes, like way too many clothes. And it takes you about an hour to get dressed because you try something on. Nope. Doesn't look good on me. Try something. Nope. Don't like this. Nope. And and it's like ridiculous. So I said, I want to do this. I want to feel good every single day. I want it to be simple. I want to grab what matches me that day and walk out like I'm walking on diamonds. So I started to just slowly purge my entire closet. It is completely different than it was even two months ago. Um, And it's all... Hello, lady, and welcome back to the Styled for Life podcast. Super excited that you are here. It's your girl, Katie, and it's time to get it in with a super special guest. So if you're an OG, you know what to expect. Our guests always bring the heat, but especially today, it's going to be super juicy. And if you're new around here, thank you very much for tuning in and listening to the show. The intention always with the show is to make getting dressed light, fun, and easy for you so that you can boost your mindset, amplify your brands, and just really become the best version of yourself so you can feel amazing every day. Because I was just thinking this earlier today, having a really good day, and I was like, nothing fucking trumps feeling good. Like just nothing beats feeling good. And God, if I could, I would wrap it up in a bottle and give it to you every day so that every day was an amazing day. But since I can't do that, then I'm bringing you all the juice and heat from the podcast. So today's episode is with one of my new friends, Carissa Higgins, and she's a creative marketing coach and brand, I don't even want to say strategist because I don't even know if that's the word. And when I say that this woman dances on Instagram, I don't mean pointing at words and doing reels. I mean, she lets it go. She gets it down and her creativity is just so constantly oozing and flowing out of her. You won't be able to stop checking and, and learning from her and just digging in into all the nuggets. She's so unique and so amazing. And every single time her and I connect, we just have such a good time. So I'm really excited to have her on the show because her gift isn't really just being a creative marketing coach and helping you really dig in and refine your branding. What I think her gift is, what she says her gift is, which totally is, is helping you activate your boldness. However, that means for you, because acting, beating boldness can mean different things for different people. And that's exactly what we dig into in this episode. We talk about the evolution of us and who we are and what it means and giving ourselves permission to change and evolve and go through all these. And what she does and how she does this with me in the podcast is she details her style evolution journey. So dope. When her and I connected, we met through a networking group and we just were like, hey, let's chat. We connected and we instantly hit it off. And she was like, oh my God, I love this conversation because I just recently did this with my wardrobe. And I was like, okay, you got to come on the pod and that's the story you need to tell. It's this permission to evolve, this permission to be right. And she says, like, you should feel like you're walking on diamonds every single day. And it's so amazing. And we just talk about all the nuances of that and like what that means. And doesn't mean you have to dress like diamonds every day. You need to be feeling like you're walking on diamonds every day. And I want to distinguish that because whatever is going to make you feel like you're walking on diamonds that day, just as long as you're checking in with yourself daily, and then that's always the intention. And she has a beautiful way of sharing that. So I think you'll really love today's episode. It's really juicy. Um, we're activating all the boldness. You are gonna love it. And if you feel like you're going through a style evolution, last week's episode, I talked about evolution. I talked about changing our minds. Clearly that's a theme over here going on in Style Nation, Katie World. 
If you feel like you're evolving and you're not really sure what the next step is, I've been sharing more and more free resources with every podcast in the show notes to just like help you get there and help you explore. So this week's free resource on the podcast that you can access through the show notes is going to be access to some of the latest mood boards that I've been sharing inside of the Style Squad. So I'm giving you a little sneak peek into what's in there and you can access two of the latest fall trends. So there's a lookbook in there now for um, the Lux Basics, which is where everybody should start. This is quantity, quality over quantity. This is really the heavy hitting trend for fall season is rich mom energy, which is really how to feel polished and casual at the same time. So if you are craving a little rich mom energy, just go download get access to these um, mood boards. They're together. They will come to you at the same time. The second one is the red hot vibe. That is red hot for fall season. That's the fall's number one color trend is all about red. So you can tap in. You can see all the different ways that you can incorporate it into your wardrobe, into your evolution, your style evolution, and tune in to today's episode to learn and see behind the scenes of like how this can shift and evolve and what it can mean for you and all the doors that it can open up. All right, lady, I hope you enjoyed today's show. If it resonates with you, reach out, let me know what pieces vibed with you. What do you want to hear more of? And another way that you can really support the show is to just share it with a friend and let them know how it helped you and maybe how it can help them. All right. I will see you on the other side. Carissa Higgins, thank you for blessing me with your presence on the show. I'm so excited for you to be here today. So pumped. I was just saying, anyone listening, I saw I saw the red lips and I was like, I have to match this energy. So I just put on my red lips too. So we are, it's bound to be a good call, right? Oh, it's going to be off the charts. Every time we talk, it's amazing. Like, and what's really funny is like, we'll talk and then we're not talking and then we'll talk. And as soon as I know you're coming up in my life, I'm like, yes. <laughs> Our energies are magical together. We just have to make sure that we have like a once a month touch base. Like if I don't hear from you, you just ping me and then same. Okay. Deal. Deal. <laughs> <laughs> Pinky promise. Yeah. Um, so Carissa, creative marketing coach and activating boldness and entrepreneurs is her gift so what better person to come on the show because i feel like that's what this show is all about activating boldness and giving permission giving women permission to shine and be themselves to have the confidence of a thousand unicorns oh yes and walk on diamonds baby (laughs) (laughs) those are our catchphrases for each other (laughs) Because I only think of it when I think of you, because the first time I, it ever came out of my mouth was when I was talking to you. Yeah, it was so perfect. It was literally perfect. And uh, then you came back with Walking on Diamonds, and I was like, and this is what we do. Yeah, that's what we do. So let's kick this off with um, something slightly different. So I've been really hot on this idea of tracking wins, and we're doing this thing in the Style Squad called Victory Log. And like every Friday, we do a fly on Friday. And we do a roll call for like brag. I had read this article how women, like 84% of women won't share their wins or downplay what they're amazing at. So I had been doing this, but I didn't have the stats of like, why we should do this. So now Mm -hmm. I do. So Carissa, what is a big win that you are celebrating this week? And hell, it could be more than one. I mean, baby. I just, can I just say how much I love this? Because it's the same in my community. Like women won't celebrate anything because they don't think it's big enough. And I'm like, like you can celebrate whatever you want. Like this is your time. This is you. This is how you build belief in yourself by shouting it from the rooftops. Right. So So I think for me, the biggest win this week is I have personally worked with two women who have been struggling so much to find their boldness in their brand. Like they've been trying all the things and we worked with my business partner and I, we worked with them for five days and they came out of it and they're like, this has changed my life. They're like, I am now so aligned with me. And they, the the, the same thing they said, they're like, 
you allowed me to get out of the damn box and spread my wings. And I was like, mic drop. That's what I'm here for. That is my gift. And I tell you what, when you're able to get out of that box and just stop with all of the listenings of shoulds and woulds and you need to do this, this is better, blah, 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 and just concentrate. What do I want? How do I want to show up? Who am I? Everything you do will be more potent. Everything. Mm. Mm. I love the word potent. Oh, I, I, love the word potent. <laughs> I need to use it more. Like as soon as you said it, I was like, fucking potency. Yes. yes. Potent magic. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. I love that so much. So I'm totally going to be talking about this. Anyone that's in my world for the next six months is going to hate me. I'm reading this new book called 10X is easier than 2X. Mm-hmm. And it's all about wants versus needs. And it's like, you go after the wants and stop doing what you think you need to do and focus on what you want to do. And mm-hmm. that's ca- where you can find yourself. And that's where you find the 20% of things that are actually going to get you to your impossible lifestyle. Mm-hmm. So what you just said, follow the wants, break out the box, activate your bowl and hang out with Carissa. That's all I heard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I always, you hang out with me and I promise you'll leave feeling 10 times better about like who you are and what is possible for you because we see it. And I know you see it in people too. Like you see it, it's hiding. That potency is hiding. You just need our help to like guide it out and fully explode out of you. And it's like, I can't stop it now. It just keeps coming. (laughs) So fucking cool. I just don't know what to do. (laughs) And I see it because I used to like dim it down. Like, I, that is what I, that's why I, why I even started my podcast is because I was constantly looking for ways to dumb down who I was to not be funny, to not do this, to not do this. Cause I don't want anyone to look at me, blah, 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 because that's what everyone was telling me to do. But no, no, not on this podcast. No. So you're amazing. We you know that. And that's what I said. Every time I hang out with you, I leave feeling better and we're just collaborating. We, I, you haven't even done your real marketing coach magic on me. So I can't even imagine. Um, so you're amazing. We've established that, but give us a little bit of backstory about what makes you so dope. How'd you get here? Oh, how did I get here? I had a lot of struggle. They always say, you know, there's, there's so much on the other side of struggle. And, you know, one thing that I want to empower women is they, they are so scared to tell their story here because they don't think it's once again, big enough. Mm -hmm. They don't have this grandiose, like thing that happened to this, this pivotal moment that everyone's like, Ooh, right. Sometimes we, it's just this thing that happens, a realization. You're like, I have been missing so much out on my life. Like I, I need to change my life. And that was what, what my story was. And I hadn't shared it because I thought it was so just not worthy. And my entire life, my entire life, I have struggled with fitting in. I, I doubted how smart I was. I doubted my worth. I doubted, uh, I had ex- extreme acne most of my life. So I would hide from people. I would not look them in the eye. I would dress, speaking of fashion, I would dress in ways that would draw in attention to me mm-hmm. because I didn't want anyone to see the inside of me. So I would dress very, you know, go to the bar every night. <laughs> Like draw all the attention to the outside because I didn't even want to look at what's in the inside because it was so messed up from years and years of me not believing in myself. I dropped out of college. Um, I would skip every freaking speech class ever in my life because I could not stand up in front of people and talk to them. Oh my God. I just wrote a story about this. We'll have to talk about it. (laughs) OMG. It was, it's, it was awful. Like I, my confidence ruled my life. And so many opportunities, I just said, nope, 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 nope. And if I wouldn't have done that looking back now, if I could have done the hard work then, there were so many opportunities for me to take. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't have that confidence or belief to do that. So when I became a mom, which was the next pivotal part of my story, I completely lost who I was. Like I was, I was at my lowest because now I have two little kids humans that I have to take care of. And now I'm completely neglecting every single bit of me. And I fell very, very hard. And at one point I looked at my daughters and I looked at my husband. I was like, this is ridiculous. I'm done. And it was literally that moment where I was, I made the choice. I was like, I can continue to live like this and just be in this hole in this box and worry about what everyone else thinks of me, or I can really bloom 
and and be who I've always wanted to be. Because when I was when I was in high school and college, guys, let me just say I wanted to be a backup dancer. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I wanted the lights to be on me and just like, just show them all my energy and like all this, all this energy that I get from dancing. Like, that's what I wanted to do. But once again, no courage. I would never have done that back then. But now I'm like, dude, put me center stage and I'd own it. I was going to ask you, I was like, we got to talk about the dancing on Instagram. Cause this ain't just dancing. Everyone's like dancing on reels. This is real fucking dancing. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I love it. I, it, it fills my soul and it's now, if you follow me, it is part of my brand. I yes. dance everywhere I go. I dance in the street to make people smile. Like it's yeah. just part of what I do. And that came from me working on myself and really connecting myself with people who could put that mirror up to me and say, you're fucking amazing. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, I so am. Um, so yeah, it was, it's been a roller coaster and I never, I never wanted to go to a career where I had to like go into a job and just sit and like, be like, Ooh, like I can't do that. And I was like, I just won't ever work. Like I'll just be a stay at home mom. That <laughs> I'm joking. There's someone listening that loves it. It is not my cup of tea. <laughs> I was like, I can't do this. My heart needs something else. I need to be impacting. I need to be using this gift that I've begun to found. So that's when marketing and branding really came into my life. I I came in with um, a network marketing business. It wasn't my jam, but that's the moment I fell in love with branding and helping people stand out online because I was good at it. Mm -hmm. And I was using my gifts and I was like, this is what I'm being called to do. Like I need to act and help activate women's boldness in this space because me more than anyone else have, have felt this their entire life. And at 30, I would have been 37. Finally at 37, I felt that activation, that potency come out and it's changed my entire damn life, not just in the business world, but my entire life. This is so juicy. I think I just realized why we get along so well. (laughs) We're all similar parallel stories. It's like, I was always like, on paper, my life is perfect, right? Married my college sweetheart. We have two healthy kids. We bought our quote unquote dream house. We had worked our way up the corporate ladder. And then around 37, I was like, oh, something's going to change. But everyone's like, be grateful, be grateful, be grateful. And it's like, I am. These things are amazing. But I also work really hard for them all the time and I'm unfulfilled. Um. Yeah. So like, I love that. And it's funny you talk about the stage fright, right? Cause now people will probably think, Oh my God, you guys are so bold. You can't be scared. People are like, you're great. I can't You're not nervous. I'm like, okay. True story. I just sent an email out last week and I was like, my stage fright had gotten so bad. And it really started, it got amplified right after I had my first kid. I remember being at a mom's night out with some friends and we were at hibachi and you know, they're doing the thing and it's at the end and they're about to flip the shrimp in everyone's mouth. And I was like, uh, uh-uh, uh, because you're even flipping the shrimp in my mouth. And what if I miss? And now people are looking at me like the whole, like all of this just like ran through my head. And I was like, no, you can't. Cause then people will look at me when it's my turn and everyone's like, what the fuck's wrong with you? I was like, I can't have people look at me. Oh my gosh. Isn't that funny how it affects, like you could feel it in your body. Like you're not even doing it and you could feel it happening. Like, Oh my gosh, attention is going to be on me. Like, uh, what? Yeah. And it hadn't even started. I just, once it, once I remembered, like we were heading in that direction, like a girl's night out with my friends instantly became my worst fear. And I was like, Oh, something's got to change. Yeah. I had completely lost myself. I was like, oh, this isn't what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But this isn't about me. This is about you. But when you said that, I was like, I have to tell the story. Um, So let's talk a little bit about this. I want to talk about what you'd mentioned when we were talking before about this style evolution that you've been through. Mm -hmm. Um, So let's start there. And I think we'll tell that story and then we can tie that back to like, styling and our brand and amplifying our brand and our marketing yeah. with our clothes. But oh, I yeah. want to really dive into your style evolution and you giving yourself permission to do this. Can you take us through that a little bit? Like what started this for you? Like where were you in your style? And then like what happened? And then and then well you I want you to walk us through how the hell you did it. How did I do it? Okay. So my style, let's start from what I said before. I used to dress in a way that was, it was just very, it wasn't me. It it, it wasn't me. It was just for attention because I didn't want to look on the inside. So 
my dressing was, ugh, it was insane. Like I, I've always felt unaligned with, with how I was pre- presenting myself. So it slowly started to evolve. Obviously, honestly, in my thirties, once again, it took, took that long to evolve. But in my thirties, I started realizing the power of dressing. And this started from like, when I had kids realizing like, I can't just sit around in pajamas all day and be a mom. Like it, it doesn't give me energy. So I started actually spending money on my clothes again and like dressing up, even though I'm going to get puke all over myself. I was like, I just want to feel good. Um, so I kiss your face right now. We weren't virtual. I mean, literally kiss your face. <laughs> and did you do that too? I just, that's the number one pushback. I hear people, t- get, the number one reason people tell me why they don't get dressed is because of the dog, the kids, the this. And I was like, but what about how you feel? Or I'm working from home. I'm like, but you still allowed to feel amazing just because no one else is seeing you. You see you. You see you. It makes a huge difference. Yeah. And I have a natural bubbly personality. I'm very, people will call me extrovert, even though I call myself extrovert introvert. Um, But I have a very bubbly personality. And in my mind, as I started building my personality again and my brand and like pulling all these juicy things out of myself, I was like, I'm so bright and bubbly. So that was my style for the past five years, maybe just bright colors, super, super fun clothes. Like it just was, it was all about the colors. And after I evolved as a person and I started really realizing I am an extrovert and I am bubbly, but there's a much deeper side of me. Mm-hmm. It goes beyond just the fun and bubbles. Like I have a very sensual side of me. I am very much connected to nature. Um, and as I was building my brand, I realized, man, every single time I need clarity, where do I go? I go out into the middle of the fucking woods and like, mm-hmm. <laughs> I stare at trees. Like it literally is part of me. I feel energy when I'm in, with nature. I was like, it's funny how I'm wearing all these bright colors, but it really isn't who I am. I can be the life of the party. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, but it's not who I really am. I'm a very calm person. I am a very uh, feely, touchy feely person. I, I love to make people feel th- certain ways. I want you to be totally invested with your heart and your mind. I love deep conversations. And my style just was not reflecting that. Mm. So I started playing around with neutral colors, which I was used to hate. I'm like, I hate all neutrals, except black and white. I mean, but they're not really colors. They're shades. They don't count. They don't count. They don't count. So as my brand evolved and my language evolved and my confidence evolved, I realized I my style is super freaking earthy and calm, like complete opposite of what I thought it was. So I said, you know what? Instead of trying to like pick out all these outfits, because I don't know about anyone listening, but how, how many of you stand in the, your closet, you have a gazillion clothes, like way too many clothes. And it takes you about an hour to get dressed because you try something on. Nope. Doesn't look good on me. Try something. Nope. Don't like this. Nope. And, it, and it's like ridiculous. So yeah. I said, I want to do this. I want to feel good every single day. I want it to be simple. I want to grab what matches me that day and walk, walk out like I'm walking on diamonds. So I, I started to just slowly purge my entire closet. It is completely different than it was even two months ago. Um, and it's all earth tones. It's my brand colors. I'm like embodied by these colors and Mm. these colors represent a feeling for me and they represent the brand and what I am trying to express in my space, right? I hate when I say my space because it always reminds me. Uh, of my space. <laughs> oh my God. I totally forgot about my space. Oh my God. So funny. I wonder if I can find my old account. Oh gosh. I don't even want to Thanks see that. Thanks for popping my cherry. <laughs> <laughs> my if you know, you know. <laughs> you know, right? I used to, yep. My space was the jam. But oh yeah, it's, it, it's, com- it's been a complete journey for me. And I did it pretty fast. Like I didn't even mourn my old clothes. I was like, I'm done with this. Mm -hmm. And I just started going and buying only my, my color tones. And I love it. Like you have no idea. And this sounds so silly, but it's so easy to get dressed in the morning and to feel good about what I'm in. 
and it just makes life easier. And when I show up, like I was telling you, I don't have a particular style. I wake up and I'm like, I want to be a CEO today. I want to be a sex kitten today. I want to be sporty today. Like I still have these different styles that I wake up and I just play into, but they're all the same tones, the same feel. Like you still have the same energy from me. I just like mix and match them in different ways to show up as who I want to show up that day. Cause I have fun with Obviously that. my zoom likes this. Cause you're getting the automatic oh, hey. from the AI. <laughs> hey, hey. I'm not even doing it. <laughs> my zoom was like sex kitten thumbs up. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is great. So yeah, that was a little bit about my, I mean, that's been my journey with my, with my wardrobe and I want to empower all of you who are like, this just doesn't feel right. Like look into, look into your wardrobe. Like, why doesn't it feel good? Why don't you feel good when you get in your clothes? There's got to be something about them that you don't like, whether it's the color, the fit, the style, I don't know, but yeah, it's just, it's a complete, when you, when you up level your, your closet has to up level. That's just how I see it. Oh, I love it all. I just love everything that you said about like, I was this person and this is how I dress. And I still think that there could even be another version of you in the future, right? Like we're constantly evolving. We're constantly learning like who we are just like right now, like after this call, we'll be new people like in 30 minutes, right? Like you can't unknow what you don't know. And it's like, you're always going to be shifting and changing. And so like the bright and bubbly was you for that moment. And then it just changed, but we get so caught up in identities and like, that's it. It, our identity is the one thing we're the most committed to. And this I know for fact, because this I've spent the last three years untangling from going to corporate to entrepreneur yeah. and your clothes have to be the reflection of who you are in this moment. And I'm not saying you need to go buy a whole new wardrobe. This, this yeah. moment is, you know, every couple of years, do a six month check-in, buy a piece or two. Yeah. But the evolution is slow. Mm -hmm. Right. This isn't like we talk about it in a 30 minute time span, but this is you in like 10 years. I don't know how I'm not saying that you're 10. This is 10 years ago, but it's five, 10 years in the make. What's your whole life in the making? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's it. I mean, just this last one that was very noticeable in, in my presence. It, it was probably, a, a, I would say, five year span. Yeah of this up, up level that I was like, Oh my gosh, so many realizations. I'm like, I, wow. <laughs> I feel this right now. Like just this, I feel like I've come back from vacation and I was this new person and mm -hmm. I still like a lot of the clothes in my closet. Now, mind you, I, and this is my toxic trait. I spent all day shopping, but not for myself, <laughs> for other people. <laughs> and I was like, Katie, you need to shop for yourself. But I feel like I've just had this huge, like three year up level and feeling more confident as an entrepreneur than I've ever felt. And I'm like, mm, I need new clothes. Because, exactly. Yeah. Now all these things remind me of who I was last year and I was amazing last year, but I'm not mm. who I am today. Mm. Super so juicy. Cool. And my favorite Peloton quote, she always says like, you're a masterpiece and a work in progress at the same time. And I like to think of the clothes exactly like that. Like, well, everything is like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, it's so powerful. They're so, they're a powerful tool. Super. So I, one thing I really want to dig into a little bit with you is the purge. So when we purge our clothes and this is so easy to say, just like get rid of your clothes and buy new clothes. And then the first thing that comes up is I don't have time or I don't have the money. Oh yeah. I spend good money on these clothes. Like it's like that lack mindset immediately comes in and we're, none of us are immune to it. Can you share like, were there certain things you did? Cause I bet you had fabulous clothes. They just weren't in the colors that you wanted to wear anymore. Were there any things that really stuck out to you that made a big difference in the purging process? Well, yeah, I did have a lot of nice clothes. <laughs> However, <laughs> I mean, I like I said, I kept some ones that I know that will, I'll always love. I know I will always wear them. But as far as the purging process, like I am a person, my entire life, it, it, I, I live a simple life. Um, my kids will tell you I throw away everything. If you ask them, they're like, my mom throws away everything because I have not one bit of pack rat in me. There is not one ounce of it in me, in myself. Like if there's something that I've been looking at that I don't use or something that annoys the crap out of me, I'm like, why, why do I still keep this? I get rid of it with my clothes. 
I donated all of my clothes and it was a process. It was an entire closet, like from floor almost to ceiling. I'm not even joking of my clothes, my kids' clothes and my husband's clothes. Cause, cause we all kind of did a purging together, which was fun. Yeah. Um, so we donated so many clothes. So I felt good about it. It wasn't like I'm throwing these clothes out. Like I know some woman who gets these clothes that I gave away is going to feel fucking amazing in them. Just like I did. Yes. Right. So it's a gift that keeps on giving. So I didn't find it necessarily hard to purge, but what was scary is when I purged and I was like, I have no clothes. <laughs> I literally have nothing. Honestly, like those are my favorite clients though. I love the person that only has a couple things because there's actually so many more things that we can do with the least things than the more, the more you have, it's just like, you can't even, you don't even know where, it's overwhelming. It's decision fatigue. You just don't even know where to get started. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm all, I'm all about the less is more. Um, I love that story. The one thing that has helped me and has helped some of my clients is like, if you don't want to just donate to your local green drop or mm. I don't know if it's very state to state here, we have a lot of veteran programs because we have a lot of military mm. and things like that. Like one that's always helped me is um, battered women shelters or women that have been incarcerated that are trying to enter the workforce again and different things like that. So like, if you want something that's really specific like mm-hmm. I always say, go look up those if you're if you don't want to just like donate it to Salvation Army or Yeah, Salvation Army. I was like, what's the one I'm thinking of? And yeah. it is a tax right off. So there is that. Yeah, I have a um a women's shelter here that a friend of mine helps run. So yes, perfect. They all went to the and the kids' clothes went there too. Like I yeah. said, I had a Yes. Because a lot of the times those two things go hand in hand. Yeah. 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 So I looked at it as a gift. And also me just being me, I was like, dude, I get to buy some new clothes now. <laughs> yes. Like, and, as as, and then when you know what your intention is and you know it, your, it's your brand colors, you knew why you were buying those clothes. Oh. And shopping's not a chore. And you actually save money when you are aligned with what you wear because you know when you go into marshalls and you're like oh i have all these things do i really need them if it's now if it's not my color eh, i'll just put it back like there's no overthinking so if i have actually saved so much money and i have a combo of nice really nice clothes and like marshall clothes like I, i they're not all they're a mix and match but it saves me time and money Time yeah. and money to have a uh, an intentional wardrobe. Yep. So saves you time and money, and then it gives you back the most precious resource that you have is your productivity and your attention, your presence, your mental clarity, your badassery. <laughs> like yes, like that's the thing. I'm like, there's been studies. There's a whole thing called enclosed cognition. We will rise to the occasion of the signals that are closed or the subconscious beliefs we have about our clothes and we will act that way mm-hmm. it's so freaking juicy so when you're working with clients um does this come up a lot do you see and i'm not sure because I, I don't know your clients I'm, I'm just getting curious now like do you see people from like they start working with you and then they start to change how they dress how they show up what yeah. is that like to witness from a like marketing branding standpoint? Yeah. Well, I always challenge my clients to take some risks. I mean, yeah. in multiple places, but just, I mean, take some risks and that is your presence. Like if you're online, take a risk with your presence because they're always like, I don't know what to post. I don't know what pictures to take. I feel awkward taking pictures of myself. My house is not clean enough. My wardrobe isn't good enough. Like all of these things that come into their mind and I'm like, stop, stop, so stop. Like, what do you want to wear today? Put Mm -hmm. that on and take a badass photo. I don't care what's in the background. Just capture how you're feeling. Like, put on what you have, take a picture, and post it. Like, that's a risk for a lot of the clients that I work with because they're just building their brand. Like, they're newer coaches and they're just uncomfortable with that that side of them. Oh, I remember my first, like, Instagram post. (laughs) You know what? (laughs) Oh, my gosh. And... They, you know, they always are asking, how do you take so many photos? How are you comfortable? Is it practice? It's practice. And not only is it practice, it is uncovering yourself. Like, nothing is easy. 
it's not as easy as I'm just going to show up like this. We have to do the deep work and the women I work with are willing to do that deep work. But when they do that deep work and they come out on the other side, they do say, I am showing up as a different person. I feel a shift in who I am. I feel a shift in how I'm showing up as the woman that I've always said I wanted to be. And a lot of times that includes how they are showing up in their clothes, in their videos, in their photos. I mean, it's just, it's, it's a confidence journey. Yes. Yes. And I drill this into my clients into the style squad constantly. It's like the definition of confidence. Cause I think confidence is one of those words that we've overused to the point that we don't, when we hear the word, like potency is, oof, I feel it in my soul. Cause no one ever says that to me. Sorry. Right? Yes. It's certainty. Yeah. I was like, like, I went to the dictionary. I was like, what is it? I was like, it's certainty and it's certainty of one's self. It's a knowing in yourself. That's what confidence is. It's not the confidence that I know how to fucking make a YouTube video. It's the confidence that I believe that I will figure it out or that I just believe that I do know I have the message and the message will evolve or whatever. Yes. Certainty in the knowing. And it does not, like you just said, it does not have to be perfect right off the bat, right? It, it, mine is so sloppy. Like I still try things. I test things all the time. It's sloppy all the time, but I know with certainty, the message I'm trying to get out is going to hit. However, that looks, it's going to hit. It might be a little sloppy in the process, but I mean, I'm certain, I'm certain, I'm certain in that <laughs> message that I have. Yes. I love it. And my favorite analogy to tell people uh, and th- that I remind myself too, is I think of people I look up to and like, I'm obsessed with Beyonce. And I'm like, if I go back and I look at Beyonce's old music or old albums, yes, she was still an icon of the times, but look how she's evolved. Look how much better she is now than even when she was amazing back then. And you're no different. Yeah. I love that so much. It's I know. So much easier when you get it off of yourself, <laughs> you put it on to someone else. You're like, Oh, okay. I can do that. <laughs> right oh yeah just baby Beyonce I'm just baby Beyonce working my way up it's okay (laughs) like a big mission of mine is to crush that like overnight success like everything happens overnight like it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't like full transparency. I want to take this podcast and start doing videos, right? My husband and I yeah. literally just spent three hours just setting, figuring out the setup, just the damn setup. We haven't even hit record yet. And we mm-hmm. kept just saying, okay, we're just chunking it down and we're taking it day by day. We realized this isn't going to be an overnight success, but it's part of my big vision. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. We all start somewhere. And one thing, when I get real burnt, when I get real twisty in my entrepreneur journey, I always go back to, I think of my corporate career. Now that I've healed some of the identity trauma around losing my job so abruptly and like who I was as a person, I always think back to like my first job, my second job. And I'm like, I'm literally only three years into this journey. When I lost my career, I was 17 years in. Mm. Like when you compare the two, like I do think I'm quantum leaping when you compare the two, but I always try to remind people of things like that. I'm like, and myself. Everything I remind people of, obviously, the things I remind myself about. <laughs> I mean, obviously, it just makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> the reason I can tell you this, um, why am I an expert? Because. <laughs> I know. Because <laughs> I fail at these things, too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, uh, yeah, we fail at so many things. It's funny. There was someone who came up to me. Um, I was actually shopping. Um, and she came up to me and she goes, what's your name? And I, I said, Chris. And she goes, wait, so you are Carissa Higgins? And I was like, um, yes. <laughs> She's like, I follow you on Instagram and Facebook. And she goes, you give me the confidence to show up as me. And I look at every single thing that you do and post. And I'm like, I have never seen this woman in my life. She has never messaged me. She's never liked anything of mine. She, I don't even know who she is. And I was so thankful and grateful at that moment. I was like, oh my God, like what a reminder that you're on the right path to helping women have certainty in themselves. Oh, certainty. What? Oh, yes. That's amazing. I, and my favorite part that you shared though is like that she'd never actually said anything to you, but you were changing her life every single day behind the scenes and new entrepreneurs. That's a big 
thing to remember is that it's not that it's no overnight success and there's not a lot of instant like gratification. Mm -mm. You feel like you are impacting and serving and doing a lot for not a whole lot in return in the beginning. I mean, that's just the truth. We, we are building our brands yeah. and we are building the trust and we're, we're building our message and, and our movement in this space. And if we just give up because we're like, Oh my gosh, I didn't get likes or comments. Like no one's listening. You'll never get where you want to be. Mm-hmm. And I know I make a lot of jokes about mom being a mom and not, not enjoying it, which is obviously all jokes. I'm a fucking amazing mom. Um, they're always watching. It's just like your kids, right? Like oh, yeah. my kids aren't liking, <laughs> tell me, well, they do something they like me, but you know what I mean? They're not liking and commenting, but they're always watching and they will always drop it at the right moment. And, and I'll be like, well, why did you do that? Why did you say that or whatever? And be like, oh, well, because you told me this or you did this or that's what you and dad do say or be. And I'm just like, it's always a good reminder that you're not going to get those things, but like you're still impacting someone else's life. You're still giving someone else permission. Mm -hmm. And when those days when I'm scared to activate my boldness or, and I don't feel certain, I just, if I can't do it for myself, then I pull on like, okay, well, if I do this messy sloppy thing and I show up and look like an asshole, there's going to be someone that's watching it. That's like, I can do that. Oh, Mm -hmm. okay. I can see myself doing that. And that gets me through it. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's how we become relatable in this space because there's so many, there's so many people who are like people look up to They They've already put in their time. They're like 20 years into entrepreneurship. They, they're, they put in their time and they're way up here and people are looking up to them and it feels almost like you don't relate with them because you're still down here doing the messy action, trying to figure your stuff. Well, there's trying to still figure stuff out too, believe it or not. At a new level. But yeah. You just don't, you don't relate to them. So when you can come up and just be yourself and test it out and see what happens, like you become relatable. I stumble over my words constantly. (laughs) Um, And that's something people are like, I feel like I can just go live because you mess up and you you do great. And I was like, well, yeah, because it's not about the words that I stumble over all the time. Once again, it's about my, my message. Absolutely, dude. Absolutely. Like with this podcast and people are like, well, you can edit, right? I'm like, eh, don't bank on that, baby. <laughs> because if we're not editing over here, I mean, like if your kid walks in and, you know, like something goes sideways, yeah, we can take that out. But yeah. if you just like even need to like regain your thoughts and pause, I'm going to leave that in because that's real yeah. life. And I try to, I try to hold myself to that. I mean, well, I do because I'm actually just too lazy to edit, but. <laughs> Get it. <laughs> It's relatable. It's real. And then that gives me, I love behind the scenes shit. God, that's like my favorite when movies and whoever, when people show bloopers, I'm like, I live for that. We'll do that. Well, I'm going to have to do that with the video. We'll I'll make some bloopers. Bloopers. Like, yeah, we'll make some bloopers. <laughs> is there, this has been amazing. You've said so many amazing things. My brain is like, ping, 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 ping. And I was going to like try to highlight, but I'm just going to have to, I got my handwritten notes because I'm old school. Um, uh, is there any other gem you want to drop on anyone? I mean, any other gem you want to drop on anyone listening before we share with where everyone can find you in your amazing dancing videos and just all the ways you can help women? Yeah, I just want, I want to give everyone who's listening just permission to test, test things out because you already have, you have this vision of the woman who you want to become that you're growing into. You already know how her day goes, like how she looks, how she dresses, how she thinks, you know, how she runs her business, how she runs her family. Like, you know who she is. You think about her every day. And I know this because I daydream about her. Like, okay, this is what I'm going to be doing soon. Like, this is who I'm going to be like. You already have that vision and just give yourself the opportunity to step into her just for maybe like, even if it's like 20 minutes a day, like be outrageous. Would she take herself to a salon and get a full on like manicure and and hair did just go do it. Like, honestly, it feels so good. If she is going to want to dress up in a full on pantsuit and like red pumps, just do it because you will feel so much different. You will embody her. And when you can embody her, people feel that energy from you. And it's so much fun. It, it's so much fun, but it helps you become her quicker when you can actually do the things that she, you know, she's doing and dress the way she would dress. Um, it's just, I don't know. It's some people are just so comfortable with staying in their 
comfies, which I, I do too. There are days I put on my sweat, my favorite sweat yesterday, my favorite sweatpants and t-shirt and went to town, but I was feeling it. That's like what I wanted to wear. Yes. But just give yourself the permission to step into her and dress, dress her how you think she would dress that day and tell me how good you feel. Yes. Because your clients and your family and everyone in your life will feel that energy. Yes. 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 Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, that's so juicy. Um, pimp yourself out. Where can everybody find you? <laughs> so I am on Instagram, Carissa Higgins. Um, I also am on Facebook. I'm still over there on Facebook. It's actually where I've grown my entire business over on Facebook. Who would have thought? Uh, people call it the dinosaur of social media, but I love it. Um, I, I love that. I mean, I'm connected with you on Insta, but I love that you're there. <laughs> I know, right? Like I, I just started really going all in on Instagram. I don't know, maybe a year ago, I started like really focusing on it, but Facebook's always been my jam. And I also have a group over there called learn, earn, in, or learn, earn impact. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's where I really help those rising coaches just become more bold in their brand through brand positioning. And I just, it's a real and raw group where I, we give it all away basically. Like we want you to have wins, whether you invest in us or not. Like we want to get you to your most potent self. <sighs> so juicy your most potent certain self and you're hanging out with carissa and i will put all those links in the show notes so everybody can connect with you and find you and thank you for dropping into my day today and making it so much better thank you i love this i always love our conversations